Okay, hi, welcome back to another video. So, today we're talking about Fedora Rohat Ride, and uh, we're doing that because it has a new installer. And it's a lot different from the installer that I showed a couple of years ago, because they've been redoing it and refining it, and it's not coming till 2025, which makes me sad, because it is so damn good. It's a web installer, I'll give you that, but you know, it still, it still does what it needs to do. And I like this tiny little window that pops up. Look at this. This is horrible. What a, what a horrible little window. All right. Let's see if we can scale the display. Always. There we go. We're going to hit next, next install to disc and it should boot it up. Now this is a web installer. Okay. And take a look at this really cool huh it automatically detects your drive you can also hit modify storage we're gonna go do that <clears throat> but we don't need to uh continue with storage again i want to get out of here fine we'll proceed with installation and erase disk mount point assessment so you can do manual if you need to to be able to get through this so if you want to stall alongside of windows you can do that we hit next you can choose to encrypt your data Tin foil hats be praised and we hit next it's pretty much that's it it's simple it's easy to use there's not a lot of options for it but that's kind of the good part is it's straightforward and uncomplicated like the old installer but what if i want to complicate things what if i want to modify the storage what if i want to go here and uh format this so it's on format it and if i want to go here create a partition table Let's say overwrite existing. I don't want to do that because it's brand new, right? You can do that and we can go to free space. We can create another partition. We can call this boot mount point slash boot slash EFI. Don't know if this will work completely yet. Uh, that will have to be an EFI system partition. All right. And it's supposed to be one gig and hit create. All right. And then we would create another partition. We'd call this one root and we just put a slash there you make that btrfs uh well i don't know why ntfs is in here but it's in here i honestly go with uh, butterfs on this one and make that 106 gigs no encryption create done there we go we have everything that we need right and then we return to installation not met you have not defined a root partition i did define a root partition it's right there you silly goose all right let's format this i mean it's right there there's the root partition <laughs> it's trying to screw with me all right let's format it as one all right <clears throat> there we go that is root okay turn to installation I have not to find which is required to install Fedora. Like it's right there. I I think it doesn't understand. We're going to proceed with installation. Okay. Um mount point assignments next. So again, uh this is our root and this is our you know thing and there's no boot though so it is required to have a boot all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go back and i know this is weird but hey you're going to be learning something here how cool is that uh, if we go here i'm going to delete this like that we're going to create a partition we're going to call it boot and it's going to be slash boot all right and i think this is supposed to be xt4 and we're going to make this a gig. Great. Done. And uh, and finally, we create the final partition, which is what I'm going to call root. And RFS. Done. Create. All right. Return to installation. It didn't get it right again. Well, look at that. So mount point assessment. All right. Root and vda1 and vda2 we are going to format all of these hit next 
All right, look at that. Apply, mount, and install. Just do what I tell you to do. Sorry about that. I, I love when installers tells me I'm wrong. Am I wrong? Comment below if I screwed up, because I don't believe I did. Because if we go in and this boots directly into the OS, that's a bug. <laughs> I mean, it is Fedora 41. I mean, it's a, it's a pre-release. So obviously you can get some things wrong or it can get some things wrong. But yeah, this new installer is kind of cool. Congratulations. I just kind of showed you how to dual boot with Windows. You just have to create those individual drives. I mean, if you have a Windows drive, you choose the biggest partition, you hit shrink. Okay. And out of that, you create, say, I don't know if you have a one terabyte and you've got like 300 gigs taken up, create a 250 gig you know, uh, partition, then you turn the first part of the partition into a one gig EFI and a one gig boot. And then the rest can be used for the root. If you don't have a lot of Ram. You could also create a swap and have that there for extra Ram. I'd recommend only doing that if you have an NVMe because it's kind of slow on an HDD and it doesn't, it won't feel like Ram at all. It'll just feel like your system is chugging when you run out of Ram. At least with a good Gen 4 NVMe, you're not really going to notice much of a difference, okay? Because DDR4 and some really slow DDR3 did run at, you know, Gen 4 speeds of 7 gigs, 7.8, 7.9. I remember DDR3 doing that, so at least it will seem fast. Yeah. Anyway, uh, system configuration. So it just finished installing the software that's needed, and now we're doing a system configuration. It's installing the bootloader. Now, if it has problems here, I screwed up. But if it doesn't, I didn't, you know. Uh, by the way, this for new Linux users, in case you don't know, is called Vert Manager. I meant to do a video on how to set this up. I'm still going to do that for you guys. And I want to do that with Nabora 40 ISO. So you guys can just, you know, jump into that if needed. But uh, Vert Manager is like VMware, except way smaller, way more efficient, way more options. If you have two GPUs in your system, you can send one of them inside of the VM and you use that GPU for hardware acceleration inside of the VM. Super cool, super easy to do as well. Like if I click this button and I click add hardware, and I know what my GPU is, right? I mean, you can go to graphics, sure, but you can add a host device. Look at this. Like, look at all this. And my GPU is right there. All I'd have to do is add it in. But that can only be done on a headless version of Fedora, which I don't have. So uh, if it picks up GPU acceleration, then it does. All right, look, starting boot options. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Yeah, it booted up Fedora. See, I wasn't wrong. It was wrong. It didn't know any better. All right. <clears throat> so we're in Fedora 41 now. How nifty is this? Welcome to the future, my friends. Here we will conquer the world. I forgot who I am for a second. That's not me. All right. Funny voices. That's me. Oh, it even shows my color. All right. Mars will be mine. Looky, 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 looky. So not much has really changed, I guess, from Fedora, you know, 40 to 41 at the moment. I mean, everything's looking about the same. We still can't friggin' do like uh, 1440p in this VM, though. I guess I'd have to set something special up for that. I want to look at I want to take a look at the kernel because I always like taking a look at the kernel. I know it seems weird, but you'll get used to it. So I'm on a newer kernel still than Fedora 41. Ha 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 ha! I win. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The new look at the Fedora 41 installer, which won't be in Fedora 41, which will be in Fedora 42. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video because I got Linux content, emulation content, and more stuff like that coming. Bye, everybody.